Yeah, it's uh, from a cicada. They're everywhere. There, can you hear that? That's the adult cicada. No, I didn't turn the volume up. That was the cicadas all talking to each other. Welcome, folks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just got through uh, mowing the lawn. Uh, take a look. Yeah, it actually turned out okay. You know, I'm getting used to that lawn more. And uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of lawn going around underneath this tree and a lot of reasons for that. But take a look over here real quick. What do you think? Should I put a bocce ball court right here? How to build a bocce ball court for hours of fun in your own backyard. Bocce ball is an enjoyable game for all ages that's rapidly gaining popularity. And if you've ever played, you know exactly why. Stand in the hot sun and Texas heat summers and uh, play bocce ball. Maybe that's such a good idea. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's too hot. Speaking of hot, Today actually turned out to be a nicer day. Well, here, let's go inside the tool shed and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, it's um, looking at the weather in here, the temperature. It's, uh, what does that say? It's, uh, 84, 85, maybe 86. Yeah, not, not too bad. Here, let's put you down on here. Sometimes I uh, make things worse. Um, yeah, it's only, what, 87 degrees right now? It's about noon. Uh, 88. That's what it says in the Waco area. China Spring, 88. So it's going to heat up. It's supposed to get to be about 94 today, which, you know, the last couple of days was uh, about 105. So it's cool. We had a nice... Um, northern storm kind of pushed the high boy i don't want to sound like a meteorologist because i'm not so today the air conditioner inside the tool shed's not on i just have the window open this guy right there and uh it's you know it's kind of equalized temperatures a little bit it's actually not so bad in here at the moment but that leads me to something that I probably have never done before, and that's come to you for a little bit of advice. Um, this year, this being 2024, is the seventh year that we've been in Central Texas. And when we first moved here back in 2017, um, we experienced, for the first time, deregulated power um, energy for homes, electricity, basically. And where there is gas, natural gas out here, it's not the norm. A lot of, ever since mm, the year 2000-ish, uh, there's a lot of electricity as opposed to natural gas, and that was... I'm told that was because uh, the delivery of gas is rather expensive and the delivery of electricity is a little bit cheaper. Plus, um, as you may or may not know, Texas is off the grid. And what I mean by that is uh, they run their own electrical power system. They don't rely on uh, the national grid like many states do where there's power being generated generated around the country and then it's brokered in to the various locations like in California um, California had something at least in my area which was Pacific Gas and Electric and they generated a lot of electricity primarily um, from dams that are in the Sierras and that you can do some research on that or you know if you want it and you can just ask and I'll tell you a little bit about that um, but they did rely on outside sources so individual counties um, may not be able to generate a lot of their electricity so they would 
buy it from other areas. And that's kind of how California was. Texas isn't that way. Um, Texas pretty much is regional and each region takes care of itself. And then there's a, um, a an overall organization, I guess, that regulates power. Anyway, um, is power cheaper here in Texas like, is where I'm, I'm going with this. Yes and no. Um, back to when we first moved here, we were able to get power at about almost three and a half cents per kilowatt. Now, some of you may be going, what? What? That's cheap. And it was compared to what we were paying in California when we were there. Um, and uh, it seemed like, wow, that's not so bad. Until you actually, we had to actually live with the power company here um, in our location uh, where the power would go out twice a week. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Okay, I understand why we're paying three and a half cents per kilowatt because it goes out all the time and it's not that reliable. So for a very long time, we were wondering, hmm, maybe we should power uh, our home at least partially with uh, solar or uh, battery. And believe me, Solar is a big deal out here, and it's a big scam out here, too. Hey, how's it going, sir? And what really irks me is I've got a sign. And they still ring my doorbell. The individual homeowner doesn't really benefit from the power that is generated from my rooftop. They're not renting my rooftop. That's the thing. They get that power for free, and I still have to pay for it. But... Um, it's much less than if I just took it off the grid. But the power company benefits because I'm feeding the grid and then I gotta buy back power after they put solar panels on my roof. And I guess I don't have to pay for the solar panels and maybe I'm getting too much in the weeds with all of this, but it's not a deal. It really isn't. Um, maybe in some places around the country it's, it's done a little differently, but here in Texas, um, it's not that big of it's not that big of a cost savings, really. And then when you get a hailstorm like we did last April, uh, everybody's solar panel was destroyed, and so the grid really took a hit because the the solar power generator companies um, didn't have any power to give into the grid, and the grid suffered. So did everybody. And it took weeks, in some cases around our neighborhood, months before new solar panels were put on that home. And the house, the homeowners had to pay full price for whatever electricity they could get because they weren't generating any of it. And it was quite high. It was way more than three and a half cents per kilowatt. All right, let's fast forward from 2017 till uh, about 2021 when our contract with the power company was up and we had to renew. And so in 2021, the, the, the lowest price of electricity that we could get was about six cents per kilowatt. So it doubled in about three and a half years. But... Um, right around that time, right around 2001-ish, uh, uh, power, at least in my area, became very reliable. And so at six and a half-ish cents per kilowatt, very reliable. Power's not going out twice a week anymore. Um, it's like, oh, okay, this isn't, this isn't as bad as the rest of the country. Well... We, we had a, uh, a three and a half year contract, I think it was. I'll have to ask Shooting Gal. It may have been a four year contract. Anyway, it's up this month and the cheapest power we could find because 
You know, there are different companies vying for your your power business. The cheapest I could find uh, was 11 and a half cents per kilowatt. So it doubled again. Oh, and while I'm editing this, it just dawned on me, there's a delivery charge. You see ERCOT, who's in our area, uh, is the conduit by which this power is sent to us. And they charge me three cents per kilowatt this year. So that puts my 11 and a half cents up to like 15 and a half cents per kilowatt total for 2024. It's a racket. And as a matter of fact, it didn't get any more reliable. It just got more expensive. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, they're trying to build an infrastructure, a better infrastructure here in Texas, where they feel they could sell power to the rest of the country at a lower price and still make money, all the while charging their customers uh, double the cost as it was a few years ago, just so they can build that infrastructure. Still not a deal for the customers, but, you know, I'm going to be paying 11 and a half cents per kilowatt, which is like what Nebraska pays. And, you know, I was just looking it up here. I've got this on my phone. Um, Hawaii. Well, we, we even talk about Hawaii. 44 cents per kilowatt. Yikes. Um, Vermont, 19 cents per kilowatt. Uh, here we go. Nebraska is 9.85 cents per kilowatt. Idaho, 10, 10 and a half cents ish. Washington, the state of Washington, 11 cents. Oklahoma, 11 cents. South Dakota, 11 cents. So it seems like a lot of the country is paying about what we're paying. So it's no deal here in, in, um, in Texas anymore. Now, if you're in California, or gosh, if you're in Hawaii, we just saw that, didn't we? Um. What's it going for in California? I think California is paying roughly 29 cents, 30 cents per kilowatt on average. So it's quite a bit higher there too. All right, guys. My power is going up. The cost of electricity is going up. Um, what would you do? I, I'm I'm now having to reconsider. Do I go to some sort of battery bank uh, and solar generating to charge those batteries to run my home on my own, or or maybe what I do is take enough battery power that can service a part of my home. Maybe my air conditioning. I run my air conditioning. And, Every day, when we compare our bill from winter where we don't run air conditioning, I'll give you an example. My summertime power bill, because I'm running the running the air conditioner so much, is about, and please don't hate me, okay? And I know I'm sounding like I'm complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to find alternatives. Um, I'm, I'm paying about $250 a month for electricity in the summertime to keep my house roughly 76 to 77 degrees. In the winter time, our, our power consumption, or at least our overall bill, um, is about $50 a month. Oh, well, shooting guy, just get a more efficient air conditioner. I do, I have a very efficient one. We just had an air conditioner, an air handler anyway, put in last year. You've seen some of the escapades with that. And a few years back, we had a new compressor put in, which was very supposedly uh, efficient. And they're not, because you, you can't cool as well as you used to because of the gosh darn EPA. Don't get me started. So the difference between summer and winter is quite huge. Um, I just need, and now it's gonna be double. If I'm paying $250 a month last year for summertime months, running that air conditioner and and prices have, uh, of electricity have doubled it's going to double that bill it's going to be about five hundred dollars a month for the summertime how do i offset that do i get battery backup put solar panels up spend roughly eight thousand dollars which is going to take a, a while to pay for itself 
just to get that monthly down if I have that kind of outlay that I can do. And what system should I use? You know, I there's a lot of guys stumping, you know, Jackery is out there, EcoFlow is out there. There's there's you know, Tesla Wall, you know, Tesla's another thing. I'm not sure what to do. Have any of you guys thought about it? And what should I do? Do you have any experience with it? Leave a comment down below if you have experience with backing up at least parts of your home. Like I, I don't need to back up everything, although um, when the power does go out, I'd like to make sure I have enough reserve that can keep my freezer and my refrigerator going because um, we do have quite a bit of food. And in the summertime, if it goes sideways, I'm gonna be out a lot of food. So I don't want that, um, but I don't need to run the whole house. Or maybe I should because I have thought about putting a battery supply in here that solar run that this tool shed which is a 12 by 12 it's 144 square feet which does pretty good with um, that air conditioner right there uh, a 12 by 12 does pretty good yeah so I can probably run this whole uh, tool shed and that air conditioner on a single battery brick you know $2,000 battery brick with maybe 300 watts of solar panel on this roof. The roof here faces south, at least this one side of the pitch, and I can get sun most of the day to keep that battery going and then leave that air conditioner on all the time so it stays nice and cool in here. And that is a solar panel for that light right there. So do I do that to the whole house? I guess that's what I'm asking. Do I run the whole house? Do I not run the whole house? Do I just supplement? What are you guys doing? What system do you use if you use one? Jackery, EcoFlow, Tesla Wall, what are some of the others? In the comment section down below, even as I'm talking, start clickety-clacking some of the stuff that you know about it and um, leave me a comment, okay? I'm planning on doing something and maybe we can all learn something and help each other out because I'm pretty sure uh, electricity and energy for this entire country, the prices will not go down. They'll only go up. They may stabilize, but I can't see them going, hey, you know what? Electricity is three cents a kilowatt now. Those days are gone. So maybe we can help each other out. You'll certainly help me out and I'd appreciate it. I've got some links. Click on my links. That does help me out too. I've got a shirt. I don't have an example of it on. Gosh, I probably should have put it on, huh? <laughs> but it's this shirt right here. And uh, that came from a suggestion from one of you. Uh, you can't have too much shop. I agree. I, I, I wish that my shop was bigger. You can't have enough. You can't have too much shop. Those shirts, if you would care to get one, are available. It would help out the shooting family. Thank you. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you guys later. God bless you. God bless America. May America bless God. And I'll see you on the next video. <laughs>